Hello, in today's video, we're going to be taking this image and we're going to be transforming it into something that looks a little bit more like a long exposure. We're going to be doing that through the power of Photoshop and post processing. Now, this is not a substitute for long exposure in camera, but there can be many, many reasons why a uh, long exposure wasn't possible for you when you're out on your shoot. It could be far too windy. Uh, you might have forgotten your tripod. You might not have filters. And so this is a great way for when you get back, you look at your image on the big screen and think, ah, oh, why did I not do a long exposure photograph? Okay, so we're starting off in Lightroom and uh, the things that we're going to be altering really are the, the water in the sky here. Uh, this isn't about the way that I'm going to edit this image in terms of colours and light and that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to put it into uh, the kind of format that I want using one of my uh, presets and then we're going to go into Adobe Photoshop. And the first thing that I ever do whenever I take an image from Lightroom into Photoshop is to make a second copy. And then once I've done that, I'm going to start to make some selections. Uh, now, for an image like this, um, if I, I just want to show you why I'm doing it the way that I am. Um, because what I'm looking to do is to select the main subject matter, which are the buildings and that bridge there. Um, and if I try and do that with some of the AI selections there, so like the sky uh, selection, we're going to see that it's, it's off. Um, and yeah. Of course, you, you can work with that as a starting point, but I think there's a better um, way for me to do this selection. It just makes it a lot easier, and I am all about ease. If I can do something easier, then I'm definitely going to. But you can see as we move along that the sky selection there and um, that the AI has chosen isn't fantastic. So I'm going to look at a um, different way of doing this. And uh, for me, on this image, uh, the way that I'm going to go about doing that is by choosing the focal area. And with that focus area selected, I already it's already chosen a selection. I'm just going to check that around there and see where we've got right. Okay, there's loads and loads of different ways that you can make uh, selections or you can create masks in Photoshop. And this is the one that's working for me on this project. Uh, use whichever one works well for you. Whilst the subject AI selection didn't work for me on this particular image, um, it might do on whatever image you're doing. So go with whatever works for the image you're working. Now I need to do the same thing on the water here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a selection tool there, select pretty much everything. And then I'm going to go through and just kind of um, enhance that, touch it up a little bit and get it exactly um, where I want to be. Okay, and the selection doesn't have to be perfect, uh, but we are going to output that selection to a new layer. And when we click OK, you'll see there that the uh, background copy 2 comes out, and we've just got our subject matter um, in there. The rest of it is masked out. So next up, uh, we're just going to make a couple more selections, and we're going to do this, and it can be really rough now i'm just going to go around all of the buildings here with the lasso tool and i'm going to create a selection for the sky this doesn't have to be um, perfect by any stretch of the imagination and you're going to see why um, in a little bit i'm going a bit askew with my mouse here it's a little silly so i'm just going to grab my magic one tool and um, that should sort that out and it does that's perfect so i'm going to head up to select and go and save that selection i'm going to save that as sky command and d to get rid of that selection and then i'm going to do exactly the same thing but i'm going to do it for the water um so same scenario and just let's whiz through this now quickly and get that selection up and i'm going to name that water so why do i save selections why save a selection well uh, this for me is just a really good habit to get into it's not necessarily certainly for an image like this i mean we, we're going to be doing two masks ultimately and um, so you don't need to save selections but again I, I just find like preparing like this just means that you can come back at any time and be working on exactly the same selections um as you have done in the past you don't have to do it um, these are just the way I work. You might want to work differently, and that's absolutely fine. But if you've never 
use selections before saving and loading, give it a try and you might find that in the long term it does save you time and time is everything. We're going to take our background copy now and we're going to make another copy of it. Um, Command R, Control and J and I name the bottom copy water and the top copy sky. And we're going to start to work with the sky. First of all, um, I'm going to load my selection and in the channel, I'm going to choose sky and click OK. And that'll give me the um, selection there. I'm going to create a mask just by clicking on the mask icon down there. And you can see now that we've got our mask thumbnail, I'm going to click over onto the layer thumbnail and I'm going to convert that to a smart object. Now, working with smart objects means that it almost anything you apply now to this layer, um, we can go back and change at a later point. Um, smart objects are really useful. Now we've got our smart uh, layer. We, we've gone and we've filter and hit motion blur in the blur gallery. Um, now, once you've done that, you can choose your angle um, that you want the movement to appear in and you can choose the distance in pixels. I'm going to be pretty happy around the 250, 260 max, somewhere around there. And that angle works for me at minus 15. And that gives me a bit of movement. Now, don't worry. I know it looks a mess at the moment. I'm going to show you how to tidy that up in just a second as we stick our um, subject matter back on and our background copy too and uh, we're going to see that ties it up a little bit we've still got some mess protruding though from those buildings and this is the beauty of using smart filters is it's applied here as a mask um, so if I invert that selection with command or control and I um, that moves it to a black foreground and I can paint the mask in what I'm actually going to do is leave it as a white foreground and paint out the bits that I don't um, by selecting my brush tool. Um, I'm in a foreground color of black, painting black onto white will make that uh, transparent. And we have a hardness of zero. Um, the size would depend on you, but I quite like a big brush for this. And then just using the edge of my brush um, where that hardness, where, where it's quite soft. And now start to paint out those bits of the filter that I don't want um, on the image. You see this is doing a really good job of just getting rid of all of that building blur that we uh, that we definitely do not want on our image because the sky might move, but buildings do not. So just whiz through that quick. Uh, but once you've done that and you are fairly happy with it, as I think I am just having a quick look around. Yep, looks good to go. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy that layer. So by com uh, Command and J, Control and J, um, I'm just going to create a second copy of that uh, smart filter layer and that mask and I'm going to decrease the opacity of this one to around 50%. Now this is where using smart filters comes in really handy because if I now click, double click onto that motion blur smart filter, I can now change um, very subtly the angle of that motion blur and the distance of um, that motion blur as well. I'm not going to do much with it, but if you look at the before and after, you'll just see a very slight difference. And that's given me the effect that I kind of want. Um, so it just takes away from that kind of post-processed feel um, and just gives a more natural feel. Uh, and once I'm done that, I just want to tidy, tidy up my uh, layers panel here. So I'm just going to group those layers together and put them into a folder called Sky. And then I'm going to do pretty much exactly the same thing, but this time with the water. We've got our water layer here. I am going to go and grab my selection for the water. Um, so head up to Select. 
load selection and the channel is water. And once we've got that selection up, um, we can go and create a mask out of it. We're just going to right click on the layer and uh, go to make into a smart object and that will combine the layer and the mask as it did before leaving us just with the water layer and um, from there we can go and we can go to filter add our motion blur filtering it is up at the top but it's also in the blur gallery there and we can play around again with our angle there's no right or wrong whichever works for your um, image so I'll add that in and uh, similar to how we worked with the sky then, uh, we're just gonna go into our smart filter layer and I'm gonna paint out any problem areas. The same as we did with the sky, using the black foreground, soft edge of the brush and just going along the water's edge this time. Once we've done that, I'm gonna click back onto the layer. I am going to uh, duplicate that layer. Right click, duplicate layer. And once we've got that second layer up, I'm just going to drop the opacity of that down to around 50%. And then similar to before, I'm just going to go in the smart layer itself, click in motion blur twice, and I can just change the angle of attack and the distance of attack. And again, that'll just, I just find that this helps out a little bit with taking some of that digitization um, out of it by just uh, duplicating and having it gives a little bit of randomness to it then I'm going to click uh, command or control and s and save that and the rest of the work here is going to be done back in Lightroom okay so we're back in Lightroom and there is our um, edited image saved through there so let's just have a look at the difference bet between what we had before and what we've got now so we can start to see it's really starting to take effect um, and we'll just do some finishing touches through here in Lightroom. So I'm just gonna pull a linear gradient up over the water and uh, I'm just gonna do this to make that water just a little bit more realistic and again, less digitized. Um, so I'm just gonna change the, uh, the white balance of the water and make it a little bit warmer in tone. I'm then gonna drop off uh, the clarity and then I'm just gonna increase the highlights I think that looks a little bit better, so I'm fairly happy with that. And that's it. I'm going to make various little personal changes now to this image to get it to the final one. And that is how you create something that approximates a long exposure just using Photoshop. Uh, it's not a substitute for long exposure in Canva though, and it's not meant to be. It just gets you into the ballpark for those times when a long exposure wasn't possible on location. Well, if you thought this was useful, then definitely click this one here, which is all about getting a fine art feel uh, using Photoshop. I've been Dave, and I will see you guys on the next one pretty soon. Bye.